This is the third video of the series discussing proofs of how anyone can know that the Bible is the Word of God. The first two videos are in the description box. In this video, we'll be talking about the miraculous preservation of the Bible and the miraculous influence of the Bible. So first, let's get into the Bible's preservation. As most of you know, the Bible is made up of the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament was written in mostly Hebrew, while the New Testament was written in Greek. The Israelites were given the responsibility of preserving the Old Testament. Before Gutenberg's printing press in 1455, all copies of texts had to be made by hand. The Jewish scribes would, then, would spend most of their lives with one task in mind, and that was to keep the law of God. Many sects of scribes had their children memorize the first five books of the Bible in completion by the age of five. The most recent group of scribes uh, whose works were used to translate the Old Testament we have in English today are the, are the Masoretes. Uh, they were from around 500 A.D. to around 1000 A.D. The scroll's uh, earliest manuscripts that we had dated to about 1008 A.D. And that was until the Dead Sea Scrolls were, were discovered, which had writings dated back to the first century. Many critics of the Bible thought that there would be major discrepancies between what was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls and what we had with the Masoretic Texts. What was discovered is unparalleled by any ancient writing. The only differences they could find were very minor and had no bearing on the message of the text. Just to give one example, uh, where in Isaiah 1.15, where it says, Your hands are full of blood, in the King James, the text found in the Dead Sea Scrolls says, And your fingers with crime. Yet, what we discovered in 1947 in the preservation of the Old Testament isn't even close to as remarkable as what we already knew about the preservation of the New Testament. When the King James translator set out on compiling the manuscripts to translate the Bible, there were around 5,000 handwritten copies found throughout the world. Many of the scribes who copied these were from distant places which made it impossible for them to have checked each other's copies. Yet over 1,500 years, they found that 95% of the manuscripts agreed 99.7% of the time. This is nothing short of miraculous. And the next closest uh, ancient book is the Iliad by Homer with 643 manuscripts. But there are so many different versions in those manuscripts that scholars still don't agree on how the original story went. What we have in the preservation of the Greek New Testament is nothing short of miraculous. These 5,000 Greek manuscripts, as well as 8,000 manuscripts in other languages, were compared and used to translate the King James Bible. Since we're on this topic, I should inform you that the newer English translations were taken from what is supposedly three older manuscripts called the Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, and the, Alexand uh, the Alexandrinus. These texts were found unused with sections left empty and don't even agree with each other or the majority of the texts found throughout the world. Even though they are supposedly the oldest manuscripts we have, we have quotes from letters written to kings and other information that predates those texts, and, these, and those don't agree with the Alex Alexandrian texts either. They agree with the overwhelming majority text. Yet because of the influence of two unbelieving scholars named Westcott and Hort, all of our modern translations dating back to the American Standard Version had come from three unreliable texts for the simple reason that they are supposedly older. And this is why you will only hear me using the King James Version. So this explains the discrepancies in all the English versions of the Bible that we have. But when you look at the facts, it doesn't take away from the miraculous preservation that we have in the huge majority and manuscripts that we have. The last proof of the Bible's legitimacy that I would like to discuss is its influence. There has never been, nor will ever be, a book that has transformed people, cities, and even entire nations like the Bible. Throughout history, we've seen cultures that have, that have embraced the Bible become prosperous, while cultures that reject God's Word degenerate. We're seeing this in America today. Ever since the Bible has been kicked out of our school system, crime has shot up by 544% and our jails have been packed. The influence the Bible has had on society can be easily assessed, but even more so, the Bible has, has the ability to completely change individuals. I, know, I personally know of alcoholics, drug, addi drug addicts, murderers, homosexuals, adulterers, even compulsive liars who have been completely freed from their misery and sin. Programs like Reformers Unanimous that use the Bible as its foundational curriculum have seen over a 75% success rate 
and that's compared to Alcoholics Anonymous, which uh, doesn't use the Bible and has a 10% success rate. You don't have to look far to find a testimony of somebody who's been freed from the chains of sin through the gospel of Jesus written in the Bible. These are real people with real struggles, struggles who have found a real answer. After looking at the Bible's foreknowledge of scientific information, prophetical accuracy, miraculous preservation, and divine influence, it's hard to deny that the Bible is in fact God's Word. But for those of us who know and love the Bible for what it is, these facts are not the, the greatest reason for our faith in God. If you believe in the Bible and the Gospel of Jesus, there's one reason that trumps everything else, and that is that God has revealed Himself to you. Before I knew these facts and could lay out proofs of God ex God's existence and the Bible's legitimacy, I had no doubts it was all true, because God came into my life and changed everything for me. God is not looking for people who are smart enough to know who He is. He can give us the ability to see Him. He's looking for someone who is humble enough to admit that they could be wrong and that He is right. That is where God had to bring me before He could truly give me the eyes to see Him for who He is. If you're looking for the truth, you won't find it in yourself. If it was in yourself, you wouldn't have to look for it. Absolute truth that you can stand on is found when you find God in His Word. Empires with all their wealth and power have come and gone, just as God has said in the Scriptures. What stands today and what always will stand is the Word of God. So that concludes this series, and thank you for watching.